exercise changes what happens in the body, okay? And we need to kind of get used to that idea. What I'm gonna talk through here, some quite specifics, but in a funny sort of way, let's start off general. Let's take these images as an example. You know, we start exercising, what happens? That's the question we wanna ask ourselves. Now look, I don't think this by any means is rocket science, but one of the first points we could make is that we might experience muscle fatigue. It is not a stretch to imagine that this individual here swimming away, seemingly sort of straining a little bit, has got some tired legs, has got some tired shoulders, maybe the muscles in the middle of the back again, a little bit kind of, you know, a little bit tense, a little bit so on. I'll come back to the reasons why that might be in a few moments' time. But muscle fatigue, of course. And I think in some ways this is quintessential because it emphasizes to us that we are talking about during the exercise itself. We are talking about the short terms, the in-exercise effects of this, okay? So what else are we looking at? Well, secondly, guys, we might experience, and this will be no shock to you, an increase, that's an up arrow if you're unsure, in heart rate. In other words, um, our heart rate is stimulated to increase. There are a number of factors that will cause that from hormones, the temperature, it doesn't matter for today, but numerous things will cause that to be the case. But our heart rate is gonna rise. We know this, we feel it, we experience it. You might wanna ask yourselves why that heart is the pump, it is the muscular contractile force behind the circuitry system, pushing that blood around the body, getting nutrients and required elements into certain parts of the body, so that increases. Now, let's look at the third one. We might also, well, not might, we will experience an increase, up arrow, in SV, stroke volume, the quantity of blood leaving the heart or the left ventricle per contraction, it goes up. Now, that's actually an interesting thought because we know that the heart pump beats fully every single time, so how is it that more blood leaves during exercise? I'll just allow you to reflect on that, but stroke volume, the quantity of blood leaving the heart per contraction goes up. So do, so do the number of, or the frequency of contractions, the heart, the heart rate, it goes up too. So of course, what does that mean as a result? Well, we know that stroke volume times heart rate equals cardiac output, so we get an increase. Up arrow, my arrows aren't so good today, right? In cardiac output. So the quantity of blood leaving the heart per minute increases. Why? Because contractions per minute and the volume of blood leaving the heart per contraction has gone up during exercise. So that makes intuitive sense. Now, we also have respiratory effects. So we have an increase in what we call breathing, breathing, breathing depth. Okay. Now, this is an interesting one because breathing depth increases before breathing frequency. So, of course, as, as I start exercising, perhaps I, you know, we're playing table tennis, <sighs> that depth increases, not just the rate, but the depth. But what comes next? Of course, no surprise here. We get an increase in breathing in breathing, and I think a nice word to use is frequency. You know, literally how many breaths we're taking per minute goes up, but I do wanna to stress to you that depth is first and frequency is second. If we were talking about the mechanics of breathing in a different lesson, we'd actually be able to express why that is the case and start to notice that as you exercise in the future, maybe even today, who knows. Now, this all means that we get an increase, up arrow, of oxygen in the lungs. I mean specifically it means we draw more air into the lungs and within that the 21 percent that happens to be oxygen the o2 the molecular oxygen goes up of course as well so that's all lovely isn't it nice stuff now because of this these are kind of successive points right they all lead to one another you might want to reflect on that a little bit but because of this we get what we would describe as an increase in transfer you can call it exchange if you want an increase in transfer of oxygen to the blood, okay? So from the alveoli to the blood, we get an increase in transfer, maybe a better word might be exchange, an increase in transfer of oxygen to the blood. Now, you guys in biology are probably, you're probably studying the reasons why diffusion is more or less efficient, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get into that here, but you know why that might be in relation to ventilation, the oxygen, the, the, uh, the diffusion gradient and so on. It's not for here, but that goes up. In other words, more oxygen is delivered into the blood, which will ultimately de be delivered to places like the muscle. We're almost there. We therefore, I've just mentioned it, we get an up arrow, my arrows are rubbish, let's all admit it, but we get an up arrow of transport of oxygen, okay? And what we could say there is to the muscle, okay? So in this case, 
Let's talk about this uh, performer, I believe it's in yoga. This gastrocnemius muscle is receiving more oxygenated blood from the heart because we've got this greater transfer of exchange and more of it's transported. Now, of course, this means that not only is there more oxygen in the blood, but also more blood is being transported to this muscle or this tricep muscle here or this deltoid muscle that this swimmer is working or this quad muscle that this um, athlete is working on. That I mean, Athlete fun runner might be a better word, I'm not sure. Anyway, there we go. Final points for me, guys. We're very nearly there. Okay, last couple of points. It very much relates to this muscle fatigue, which is my initial point. During exercise, we also experience an increased removal of something. That was meant to be an M, by the way. Let me make that slightly more M-like. An increased, I don't know what's happened to my E now, an increased removal of CO2. So more carbon dioxide is removed. Now, this is about transfer or exchange at the lung, right? But also remember that CO2 is the byproduct being produced in the muscle during exercise. This deltoid is producing CO2 during its aerobic energy system work, okay? So that's being removed in greater quantities. And my final point, guys, why do we feel that muscle fatigue? I've run out of colours, but I'm going to go with yellow again. We do this because we get what's called lactate accumulation. Now, I could spend, I mean, we could do a whole playlist on lactate accumulation, but the point I'm going to make simply here is that lactate accumulation happens as a result of anaerobic work during exercise. So if, if this person here is working anaerobically, for example, you know, this hamstring muscle here, is working anaerobically at least part for part of this work well lactate starts to accumulate build up now the only point i'd add to that is lactate interestingly is not the fatiguing product lactate is associated with a hydrogen ion it, within the lactic acid breaks down doesn't matter but the point is we relate lactate to this hydrogen ion and it's that ion that ultimately causes this fatigue more of that another day on another course cheers